Welcome to Jazz History. Your host and narrator is Chase Sanborn. The 1920s were the first fully documented jazz decade and one of the most significant. In 1917, the same year that the original Dixieland Jazz Band recorded the first jazz record, the U.S. entered World War I, which had been ongoing since 1914, on the side of the Allied powers consisting of the U.K., France, and Russia, fighting the central powers of Germany and Austria-Hungary. The fighting stopped by the end of 1918, and the Treaty of Versailles was signed the next year, officially ending the war, with the Allies the victors. The end of the deadliest conflict the world had seen up to that point set the stage for post-war boom times in the U.S. It was called the Roaring Twenties, or the Jazz Age. It was a time of economic prosperity, coupled with major technological and sociological innovations, including jazz. We've already talked about the availability of electricity and the revolutions in recording technology that came about as a result. Things that we take for granted now that were invented or became widespread in the 1920s include radio, antibiotics, the toaster, the cheeseburger, and the Band-Aid. A major factor in the 1920s was the prohibition of alcohol, which took effect on January of 1920 and remained in place until the 1930s. Prohibition banned the production, transport, and sale of alcohol, but not the consumption. In other words, it was legal to drink, but not to provide alcohol. The criminal world stepped in to exploit that loophole, and gangsters essentially took over the bar and nightclub business. In New York City alone, there were thousands of speakeasies where alcohol was illegally served, while police were paid to look the other way. Some speakeasies, like the Cotton Club, were full-on nightclubs with large-scale floor shows. Jazz was the music most likely to be heard in those clubs. It was a natural fit for the atmosphere of illicit debauchery. The decade ended badly, and we'll talk more about that later. But the advances in jazz during the period from 1920 to 1930 were momentous, making it, to my mind, one of the two most significant decades so far in jazz history. If you were a songwriter in the early 20th century, Tin Pan Alley was very important to you. The name Tin Pan Alley originally referred to a stretch of West 28th Street in New York City where music publishers kept their offices. The primary business of publishing was to produce sheet music which people would buy to play a song in their home. Every music store had a song plugger who was hired to play the publisher's songs for potential customers. In some cases, groups of pluggers would buy tickets for a public event and simultaneously break out in song. These folks were called boomers. Composers could earn royalties from published music. They'd pitch their songs to the publishers, playing them on what was likely to be a cheap, upright piano in the office. In warm weather, the windows would be open and someone on the street could hear multiple pianos being played simultaneously. The most common story about how the name came to be is that a writer from the New York Herald compared the cacophonous sound of multiple pianos to people banging on tin in the alley. The name Tin Pan Alley eventually spread beyond New York and it was used to describe the composers or the songs collectively or the music business generally. The songs were also referred to as the Great American Songbook, and today we'd call them standards. The Jazz History Series continues in the next episode. Before you go there, please take half a second to click the like button for this one. 